Didn't yeah. you lose a lot of weight recently? Didn't like no? Yeah, yeah, that was a couple of years ago. Yeah, ten yeah. stone weight loss. Ten stone. That's ten. Nice. How did you do that? By uh, training a lot, and I was uh, eating. Uh, Eating healthily. Well, let's yeah. have a look because this was, we're going to talk about this because Tyson has a book out, which is an amazing story and it's an amazing journey you went on. But let's have a look at the picture because this is Tyson at his biggest. Oh my, oh God. my God. Oh my God. Wow. And, wow. And that is a glow up. I don't think that, that's that the same is. Person. So you've gone from how big were your top left there? Top left, I was 28 stone. Wow. And then and bo God. bottom uh, right, I was 18 stone. Wow. So so 10 yeah. stone. And how long did that take you to shift? Took me about seven months. That's, well, that's surprisingly that so a very quick. Period, but really. I can put weight on very quick. I can also take it off quick. But yeah. I didn't put that on overnight. That was like um, two and a half years of not training and not not eating right, not doing anything. And that was depression as well. And it was depression, it, yeah, that? and anxiety, and mental health problems. But it was the first time in my life, first two and a half years, where I'd never done any training for long periods of time. And I was just eating takeaways and drinking a lot. I was drinking a lot of beer and stuff like that. And I was putting a lot of weight on. And, so, and how did you spiral down to that? What, what, what do you think caused that depression? I've always suffered with mental health problems my whole life, but I didn't really know what it was. Uh, even as a kid, I used to have anxiety, and I'd have that feeling of being left alone and being um, just anxious all the time. And I didn't know what it was until I got diagnosed, like, at 29 years old or something. And it's, you know, that's... I think people will be surprised to hear that, cos when they look at someone like you, who's obviously very, you know, physically very capable person, but also yeah. massively successful, in your chosen field. To hear you talk about having those issues, that's, that's quite something. It's, and, and I think it surprises people to know that. Yeah, you know, it, for me especially, like, I come from a, a fighting family uh, where everyone's, like, a, a tough guy. Nobody speaks about their feelings and, and especially, like, not to come out with something like, oh, I've got mental health problems. And for me as well, like, all my friends, family and things, they look at me like I'm some sort of superhero. They don't never think of me as a, as a man, as a normal person. So when I come out with all that sort of stuff, everyone was like, what? Mm. This person's got, like, weakness or whatever? Mm. And I didn't see it as a weakness because I thought, I can't suffer in silence anymore. For a long, long, long period of time, I used to bottle it all up and... And it came to a point where it was just an explosion, like shaking a bottle of champagne up and it just exploded. And presumably you weren't comfortable at that stage, you know, talking to Paris about these things. No, everyone thought I was like an attention seeker or they didn't really understand it because none of my family had any education on mental health problems. So they didn't know what it really was. Yeah. Um, just a usual stigma on mental health. A lot of people are uneducated on the matter. Mm. They don't understand mm. what it is. And, and just also because coming you can't from see a, a working class family, there's that feeling almost like it's a weakness, like it's something you should be ashamed of or you should... Yeah, it was like, well, if you've got this, keep it to yourself and don't, don't broadcast don't it. Don't tell the neighbours, yeah. Exactly. Mm. But I, I decided to go against all that good advice. <laughs> and I thought, you know what? There's got to be other people out there like me suffering. And even if I help one person, I'll, I'll feel better. And I ended up coming out about it, wrote a couple of books about it and a yeah. documentary about it, and it, it went to be a big thing and helped yeah, millions it's a of people. Really, uh, the oh, documentary's are great and the book's great as well, The, the Furious Method. Uh, and it's an incredible book about what goes through uh, a champion's mind when he's getting ready for a fight, but also the struggles you went through away from the ring as well. And this is a really tremendous read. So uh, I'll let you have wow. it. I'll, I'll disinfect my copy and you can have it in a COVID-safe way afterwards. All don't? right, yes, I'd love to read it. But don't you think that with this um, lockdown that we've had, that so many more people are suffering from mental health? I Most mean, definitely. I have a few friends and it's been terrible just to be locked up by yourself and not go out. I mean, I can't think of anything more upsetting than just being shut in a room and not being able to... Or a little, you know, apartment and... Yeah, suicide rate is... Is high. Yes. It's higher than it's been for a yeah. long time. Depression, what, all that sort of stuff is, is what sky was your What was your lowest point then? When was the point when you thought, I, you know, I really have to get help? 2016, I was, um, I was really, really ill this day. And I've been planning my suicide for quite a long time. So you'd actually been planning to kill yourself? I've been planning it in my head what I was going to do it and whatever. And I, I, I didn't think I'd have the minerals to do it. Um, and this one day, I also thought, this is the day. So I got in this car, I was in a, I, I was in a, a red Ferrari. And I got up to a high speed. I was going to crash into a motorway bridge. Um, and I was dead set on doing it. I was 100% in my mind I was going to do it. And this was the day it was going to happen. And as I was heading towards that bridge, flying, um, I got for about, I don't know, I, what felt like was really close. It must have been a, a few hundred yards away. Um, I had this voice speak to me and say, no, don't do this. You're going to destroy your family's life. Your kids are going to grow up with no father. So I immediately pulled over to the side of the road and I could feel my heart beating in my chest. And I was sweating and I was in a right state. And that was the first moment in time that I realised I couldn't do it on my own and I needed medical help. Yeah. 
And, and, but why do you think... How did you get to the stage where you thought death was the answer? What, what, what was compelling you, know, you to...? I was waking up every day and I didn't want to live anymore. I lost the passion to live, want. So there was nothing to excite you in life and you weren't feeling connected to your family, I guess? Yeah, nothing way. mattered to me. You know, when you're so low, you get to a low point. Nothing really matters. Not family, not kids, not anything. And you're at that moment where you're going to jump off. It's, it's very difficult to, to come back. Yeah. Um, and that low point, it lasted for a long, long time. It was a long period of time, years, actually. But thank heavens you saw... Because, you know, I know somebody committed suicide, and the interesting thing about it, uh, it's obviously a tragic thing, but afterwards, none of us had known that he was suffering with depression. He'd hidden it so well from everyone. Mm. You know, his closest family knew, but yeah. none of us who knew him professionally it's knew usually that. usually the way, isn't it? People mm. don't feel like they can speak, so that's the last option. If you have people around that you are open with, that usually takes away the issue a little bit, doesn't it? For sure. Problem so shared, did, problem halved. How did you get over it? I mean, how did you recover? Well, I, um, I started to see a therapist and I, at first, I didn't think it was going to be for me. I thought, this guy's going to just go and tell all his mates, everywhere champion in the world, has got all these problems, whatever. And after going there a couple of times, I realised that if I'd have done this 10 years ago, yeah. I'd have had a much happier, better life. Because my life's always been like a roller coaster. It's been up and down. I've never had any stable mm. moments. It's just been high or lows. Um, and I realised that, if I'd have, like I said, if I went there 10 years previous, I'd have never have had to experience of that low. And the... the about to commit suicide and all that sort of stuff. Well, thank you, and it's lovely now knowing, you know, hearing you talk about it this way. Obviously, will help a lot of people. I would have thought, but mm. knowing that you can tell your children that Dad felt that bad, Dad felt that low, and you, and if you feel that low, you can find help as well. I mean, it'll be a it'll be such a positive role for them, role model for them to see you. One million percent. You know, if I can come back from where I was, we sort of stated me. I was twenty-eight stone. Yeah. I was heart attack material um, to turn it back round and and get back to to being number one in the world again at my sport. Um, it was a miraculous turnaround. I'm no one special. I was drinking 20 pints of beer. He's no one special. Like He's just the heavyweight champion yeah. of the world. Oh, He's not yeah, special. that's all. <laughs> but you are well, special. Yeah, anybody can do it. Yeah. Anybody can do it. You know, it's interesting because Russell's done quite a lot in the field because you have a podcast, don't you, about men and, and so, emotions and health in that way. I mean, it's so important. I, so I can't big up enough what you've just shared. I don't think you realise that someone like hyper, hyper masculine like you sharing your story, the type of men it will speak to. It won't be speaking to nice middle-class men sat around in a circle ready to discuss their mental health. It'll be speaking to plumbers and tilers and people that will feel empowered to speak out. That's the first thing I want to say. Thank you. Thank you. What I observed was the resources are getting better for men. And I know there's a lot of things in female mental health, obviously, but the male suicide rate speaks for itself. There's something going wrong with men. And you described it brilliantly. It's this bottling up this fizzing, this inability to share. Mm. And a lot of these um, things that are being done are for people from a more educated or middle-class background and working-class man gets left behind. And the thing that's missing, it's not for everyone, is humour. Humour often unlocks blokes better than it does girls. You've only got to go into the girls' WhatsApp group versus the boys' WhatsApp group to see it in action. Girls' WhatsApp group, there will be jokes and banter in there. It'll be like, I'm having trouble with my boyfriend. Do you all right, babe? Debbie's got problems. Prosecco ambulance, Debbie's house, boom, everyone over. <laughs> Whereas on the blokes' WhatsApp group, you've got to look for it in between. You know, banter, goat porn, I'm feeling depressed, goat porn. What, goat was, that? <laughs> what was that last question? In between the two dirty videos yeah, yeah. will be Darren telling you he's got an issue. <laughs> you've got to listen out that little bit harder because... Yeah. I'm not, I'm not one for, like, oh, men like this, women like this. Comedy's moved on. But what I've observed, the key difference between men and women that I, I can observe is women tend to have other women circling, forming a protective... You know, Carol's looking yeah. down, guard the eggs, form a Their circle around bubble. Carol. Um, <laughs> whereas the key thing girls are better at, in my family and my female friend, women will talk about a problem when there's no solution. They'll be like, do you know what, there's no solution, doesn't matter, get Linda over, light an aromatherapy candle, talk about it, we feel better, have a glass of Chardonnay. Whereas blokes will be like, can't be solved, why talk about something that can't be solved? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, whereas the very fact of talking is an, is an amazing thing. You know, blokes will be like, Gary's got problems, I don't want to watch it, put him in the bushes. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. your deposit to Falaraki you're going to lose, Gary. And we've got to change this up.